Hello and uh, welcome to this, uh, this webinar we are doing for uh, parents and uh, thank you for joining on time. Uh, I hope you are, um, you are there as a family. Uh, we have planned it in such a way that um, both the parents and the teens can um, have the time of learning together. So uh, this will be an hour and a half long. Uh, we have uh, three speakers and I'll be your host for the evening. Um, I'll be uh, also helping you out with the quiz and uh, there's an exciting family quiz in store as well. So we have three speakers lined up, one after the other, and there will be quiz rounds um, somewhere in the middle. Um, so please uh, look at the description of YouTube at the moment so that you're aware of the links that are there. And uh, so we will be posting that in the comments as well. Um, and so make sure that you are aware of, of how the links work. So uh, in your description, there is something called the Mentimeter link. So if you are on a laptop or a desktop, you can click on that Menti link and it will open up in a different browser so that you can have it uh, with YouTube and the link side by side. If you would like to join from a second device, um, you can um, uh, you, uh, you can go on to menti.com. The link has been shared uh, in the description and enter the code. Uh, that's for if you want to join from a second device. So uh, that being said, let's just quickly uh, move on to Menti. And the first question is already uh, put there on screen, and uh, you can um, you can see uh, a lot of uh, answers coming in. So what we were asking is. Which place are you joining us from? And uh, we've got some interesting answers coming in. We've got people joining from Bangalore, uh, from Dehradun, from Palampur, from Sirampur, Hooghly. Uh, we've got people from Mumbai, um, people from uh, Chennai, Cochin. Uh, we've got uh, people from uh, from the north and the south. Yes, Bellore. Um, and um, this is going to get increased as uh, more and more people join Mentimeter. So Menti is what we will use for um, some interactions as well. So I'll tell you when to move on to Menti. You can immediately go there, put your answers there, and that will make sure that um, there is interaction as well. So if people from Bhuvaneshwar, uh, from Dehradun, uh, with people from Bangalore, um, and um, yes, uh, quite a lot of places a lot of places. Yes, thank you so much for joining. And um, I hope that this will be a good time for, for you as, as a parent. And also if some of you, if you're teenagers yourself, this will be a good time uh, to uh, view this as a family. So I'll tell you when the quizzes are, we have three rounds of, of quizzes. And, um, and whenever I, the quiz round happens, I will direct you uh, towards uh, Mentimeter. Right. So, uh, as I said, we have three speakers today and we've got an exciting uh, lineup for you. And um, we'll start off with the first topic and then um, and then we will uh, have the first round of quiz as well. So uh, take notes. And um, uh, th these are very practical sessions and we want uh, these sessions to be helpful so that you can start taking action uh, immediately. And so uh, we have a first speaker. I was going to talk about uh, understanding teen emotions. And uh, this is uh, Mrs. Janet Joy. Who is joining us from Lucknow, and um, she is a mother of two and a wonderful counselor, a wonderful friend to a lot of uh, lot of people. Uh, she's been working in this counseling space uh, for for quite a few years. Um, she and her husband work with young people, helping them find purpose in life, um, and they are working with an organization called Zoe Connect. Uh, so over to uh, Janet Joy for the first uh, topic: understanding teen emotions. Thank you, Davis. Uh, good evening to you all. Uh, it's really great to be here and to be able to address the parents of our dear young people. Um, when I was pregnant with my son, I wanted to be the best mother in the world, uh, the best actually in human history. And I wanted to do everything right and make sure that my son always cherishes my presence in his life. Um, I wish I could say that happened, but it didn't. I made many mistakes and learned a lot of things along the way. Uh, in fact, the first time my son came to me and he told me that I don't like you with, with tears rolling down his cheek, it really broke my heart and it made me wonder, uh, why am I like this machine trying to get things done, forgetting who he is? Uh, and he was a growing boy and th that was like a shaking moment for me personally. Uh, so. Uh, just to quote a famous psychologist, uh, Virginia Satir, um, yeah, you can see this on the screen. Uh, Virginia Satir once said that adolescents are not monsters. They're just people 
trying to learn to make among the to, to make it among the adults in the world who are probably not so sure about themselves yeah so yeah adolescence is a transition period and this this period is extremely crucial crucial for their emotional and mental well-being uh, during this period a lot of changes occur in their physical being and cognitively they start thinking for themselves uh, physically they go to hormonal and developmental changes uh, your little girl or little boy uh, suddenly looks like a young man or woman and that's when you realize wow uh, time has certainly flown by uh, cognitively you realize that they have an opinion for everything and they are more aware of things that are happening around them and uh, they they have something to contribute towards discussion um and socially they are constantly trying to fit into a circle of friends uh, they want to be among the popular group popular circle of friends and they also given to the demands of their friends to look good and they want to be in relationships uh you realize that their self esteem largely depends on how they feel in their fr friend circle so like i was saying it's a transition period where a lot of changes are happening simultaneously there are physical changes there are cognitive changes socially you uh you see that uh, they are also having a lot of changes and you, you you tend to see that all these changes have a lot to do with how they feel emotionally and depending on how they feel about themselves uh their mood may shift from feeling embarrassed to to feeling confident and in between a lot of emotions um you notice that times when they're able to put themselves out there when they're able to contribute to discussions and make some valid points or even understand class lectures uh, you may you may see them as successful and as inspired to grow but at other times you will tend to see that they feel worthless and insecure and insignificant uh you might notice that your teenage child might show different moods in a short span of time and you may notice for you it may come across as pure rebellion but what's actually happening within them is that this intense shift of emotion which ends up leaving them confused and often times frustrated uh this intense shift of emotion can lead to conflicts between you and your children and it can be a very very difficult time at home uh while we understand what happens with adolescence let's take a minute and look at what happens to us what is it that goes on for us as a parent uh during this phase we parents are going through a transition period ourselves as we slip into middle adulthood we strive uh, to make a work life home balance we see that there is stress at work and uh, at the same time when we see that our children are experience th this kind of mood shift uh, it can be a very very difficult time i want you to know that parent adolescent conflicts are quite common and uh, and at the same time it can be very difficult but i want you to know that it doesn't have to be that way when our children behave in a, in ways that may not be appropriate and we we may go through frustration ourselves we can tend to compare our children with our neighbors kids or our friends kids and uh, as a result of that we we battle with insecurity too we wonder if there is hope and if all our dreams about them and our futures will come crashing down this may also be the time when there is so much of stress happening around us um, but i'm here to say that there is hope if we are willing to see and understand what is going on for our children during this phase there is hope it also calls for us to develop some skills of our own and i'm sure that is why many of you were here on time it's amazing how many of you logged in on time and i really want to appreciate each one of you you are here because you want to make a difference in your child's life when we have a uh, when we uh, 
got our children as a gift, uh, just like any other product, we did not get a manual with it. And many of the things that we learn, we learn it on the job. And I really appreciate each of you for making this small effort to be a better parent. And as you put what you learn into practice, you will see small changes. Now, let's take a minute uh, and think about our own teenage life. Reflect on maybe 30, 40 years ago and uh, reflect on how things were. I want you to take this time to put in the chat box one person that you felt was there and understood you during that time. What was it about that person that made you feel confident about yourself. As a parent and a counselor, I understand that there are reasons why we say certain things. There are reasons why we restrict uh, certain things from our teenage children. Why? Because we have gone before them. We don't want them to make the mistakes we made and uh, we want them to be safe away from all dangers. While, that's, while all that's true, I want us to take some time and see what is it what does it look like to stop and listen and understand what's going on for them? All of us want the same thing. That's why we're here. That's why we're attending a webinar like this. We want them to be confident in themselves. We want them as they grow up, we want them to make healthy and wise choices, to be able to make good decisions and even to be resilient, to be emotionally resilient during tough times and to be productive and make use of their time. And uh, that's, that's what all of us want here. Now we're going to just go through three keys that are going to help um, us bring them up into a much more healthier, emotionally healthy uh, teens, okay? So I've got three keys for you. The first one is nurturing healthy emotional growth. Nurturing healthy emotional growth. So, um, one of the ways to nurture healthy emotional growth is by listening to them. Uh, Alan sir is going to be talking about the importance of identifying thoughts and feelings. Uh, and I would encourage all of you to pay close attention to this. He's going to give you beautiful keys on how you can uh, build communication skills uh, that you can use with your, young uh, with your teens. And when you're able to do that, they're going to feel accepted. They're going to feel secure. They're going to feel loved, belonged. And as we do that, as we use these skills, we are equipping them to be emotionally healthy too. They're becoming more aware of what's going on for them. What are their moods? Why are they experiencing things in, in this particular way? And as they learn to figure things out by responding to their thoughts and feelings, they're, they're able to react and respond to situations in a healthier way. I also want to mention that for us parents to be able to do that for our children, we need to be aware of our own feelings and our own thoughts. And once we're able to do that, we will be able to do that for our children. So uh, as Alan sir is going to be talking about uh, listening to them, I also want you to keep in mind that Part of helping them grow emotionally healthy is to be able to go to, to help the, our children go through moderate amounts of uh, moderate amount of fear and anxiety, which helps them develop resilience. Uh, when when they um, come through those moments of difficult situations, taking part in different events, uh, which may seem like bigger than what they are they're going to come out confident and feeling successful and that directly contributes to their self-esteem. So um, our parenting style can range from being helicopter parents where we, are, where we don't want them to be hurt. We are so careful about what they're doing. We have an eye out for them where they move to be completely neglectful. So we need to be able to build a, a balance between the two and give them goals to finish uh, and make sure that they're being able to be consistent with their goals. And as we expose them to these situations, uh, they, they will be able to exercise their emotional fitness and become strong. 
So that was the first key, nurturing healthy growth, where we listen to them and uh, where we are exposing them to moderate amounts, uh, amount of fear and anxiety situations. The second point that I'd like to mention is uh, preserving their identity, helping your ch child discover who they are. Uh, we need to understand that adolescence is a phase where they're discovering more about themselves and their identity is being shaped. Beliefs about themselves, that is what they think about themselves, are formed through experiences at home, at school, and their social circle. Uh, and these beliefs get amplified and they conclude uh, and form core beliefs about themselves. During stressful times, the language that we use uh, our tone of voice, the way we behave when things get stressed affects how they view themselves. Now, what do these core beliefs look like? It can be like, I'm responsible, I'm a failure, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm loved, I'm capable, to, I'm useless, I'm a disappointment. So these are core beliefs that, that young people generally form. So um, what we want to do as parents is we want them to develop healthy uh, core beliefs. And this comes by constantly reaffirming them. And uh, even during tough times, when we face it with them, rather than avoiding them, uh, we are able to help them develop these uh, healthy core beliefs. And one thing that happens when we tend to get angry with our kids is we use the language like you always uh, tend to do this. You are never responsible. You're always lazy. You never do things on time. So it's important to important for us to know that these are core statements that speak to the identity of the child. And when they hear it re repeatedly, it it, uh, it it the the strength of the core belief just tends to get stronger and stronger. Yeah. So a useful alternative is to sort of sit with them and make sure that you're not attacking them and have a healthy conversation with them. And when uh, what we tell them when they fumble, when they fail, uh, and the question is, can we put aside our disappointment and have a conversation with them about what has happened? As parents, we can make sure that we put systems in place for them. And when we do that, they can thrive in that system and they tend to feel more successful and more taken up, taken care of by you too. Okay, so the first one was um, a nurturing healthy emotional growth. The second one was preserving the identity. The third one like I would like to talk about is having, um, helping them set their sleep patterns their diet in place and making sure that they have enough of physical activity during the day. So it's no secret that one's sleep, their diet, their level of activity is linked to their emotional health. Uh, they need to learn healthy eating habits and healthy ways of taking care of their body at home. Their sleep patterns need to be set from a very young age. Uh, many young people struggle to sleep well at night because of sleep patterns that have been built over the years. Uh, there are also young people who struggle with eating disorders and obesity, obesity and which directly affects their emotional health. So as we set these systems in place, as we set boundaries for our children, it's also important for them to be aware of the consequences of an unhealthy lifestyle. It's important for them to know why they should be uh, sleeping on time, having at least six to hours of sleep, six to eight hours of sleep, having a healthy diet. Why is it that they need to have adequate amount of exercise? And this can be done by uh, watching videos together and recommending articles for them. We also need to understand that uh, that this, this period that they're living in, this, this transition period that they're living, it's actually a very, very difficult time for them emotionally. But when they're able to uh, put these systems in place, their sleep and diet and exercise, that is going to help them manage their stress level. So even when they are out of their home, when things get difficult for them, when they have these three things in place, they will be able to man manage stress 
much, much better. Yeah. So uh, let's review what those key principles are for making sure that uh, that that we do our part in taking care of the emotional health of our children. The first one was nurturing their emotional growth, listening to them effectively, exposing them to different situations so that they develop their emotional resilience, uh, preserving their identity. That is the second one. Our language plays a crucial role. So helping them develop healthy core beliefs is extremely important for, uh, for them to be able to preserve their identity. We also need to make sure that their sleep, their diet, their level of activity is in check as it directly is linked to their emotional health. So if you feel that, I also want to mention that if you feel uh, that your child is continually feeling low for a duration of more than two weeks, please do not uh, be, be afraid to seek out for help. Yeah, so that's that's it from me. Over to Davis. Uh, thanks, Janet. Uh, that was uh, a good uh, summary of of how can parents uh, really understand uh, their teens. Um, can you put in the chat box what is one takeaway from the first segment as we talk about teenage uh, emotions? Uh, if you're a parent and um, you were listening carefully to what Janet was saying, um, what is one thing that that you that stood out to you? Can you put that quickly in the chat box as we as we as try to collect that um, uh, collect your feedback together in this chat box, right? So uh, we we have short segments like these. Um, we have uh, two more speakers and we'll have a quiz uh, in between these, uh, but. live right now i feel it's useful uh why don't you join as well right so i hope you can do that so the first uh, segment was on emotions so important because that's a transition time uh, as teenagers they struggle to find their uh, their own place they're no longer kids they're no longer adults they've not reached adults uh, yet and that's a transition time that we need to be careful as well so a few feedback um coming in the chat uh, to listen to them um, uh, to avoid comparing, uh, to uh, to not to affect their core belief, nurturing their emotions is very important. Um, so good takeaways by by parents uh, in the group. I hope you're sitting with your teenager as well. Uh, so because we're going to have the first round of the family quiz uh, right now. So this is on Menti. So please uh, join the quiz on Menti, and this will be shared on your uh, uh, on your chat as well. So uh, we're going to start off with the first round on Mentimeter, um, and ideally this is. Played with a teenager and the parent. So because the questions are designed in such a way that uh, you need both generations uh, to answer it. Uh, because if you're just one generation, you might miss some part of the of the of the question. So there are three rounds. Um, and um, and and um, please make sure there is only one device for family per family. And uh, if, if there are more devices and you enter in the top 10, that will be a disqualification for both uh, the entries. So only one device per family. Uh, please enter the full name of the parent, either the father or the mother, full name of the parent. And you answer fast, you get more points, right? So please click on the link. Uh, if you want a second device, you can go to menti.com, enter the code, and that's how you uh, you can get there. And prices are there for the top 10 winners, okay? So we're gonna start with the first round. The first round, four questions, um, four questions, first, uh, four questions. So please enter the name of the parent. Um, uh, when it comes to you know adding your name, make sure that the name, full name of the parent is added in the names and I'm just waiting for all of you. If you are there, just, just give me a like button, heart button so that I know that you are there. So please enter the full name of the parent when it comes to uh, um, you know the, uh, the name on Mentimeter, right? So make sure that you enter the full name of the parent and, um, and, and I'll be freezing the screen so you won't see the questions move on YouTube. It will all be on Mentimeter because there's a 20 second delay between YouTube and Mentimeter and that will lead to confusions. Therefore, the screen on YouTube will be frozen, but uh, make sure that you are following along uh, on, uh, on Mentimeter, right? So I'll just wait for a few more seconds. This is the first round. Uh, people are just um, joining in. Um, so I'm just gonna wait for, uh, since it's the first round, right? So um, 
please join the quiz on Menti. It's not on YouTube. If you're still on YouTube, make sure you have a second device or a second uh, screen or something like that um, so that you answer questions on Mentimeter um, right there, right? So we're going to start the quiz um, in a moment, the first round in any moment now. So make sure that you have entered your full name on Mentimeter. And the first round, four questions will start any moment. Make sure that you are on Mentimeter for that, right? So I see around 45 of you are there uh, on Mentimeter. That's good. It's a good start. Um, I hope that others will join uh, quickly as well. Um, and we're going to start any moment, right? So be on Mentimeter. And uh, that's where all the quiz will be for uh, four questions, three rounds. This is the first round. And uh, we're going to start um, uh, on the quiz. The quiz has already begun in uh, on, on the Menti screen. So make sure that you are on Menti. Um, and uh, the first round is already underway. Four questions, first round. Okay, so first round is already underway. Make sure that you're answering on Mentimeter. Quick answers, fast answers, more points. Okay, fast answers, more points. Uh, some questions from uh, the 90s, some questions from the current, uh, for the current generation. So you need both generations to answer each round, right? So make sure that your parents are there and your, I mean, you, uh, if you're a teens, uh, if you're a parent, you are there and your children are there. Both generations are needed. All right, so questions are happening. It's all coming up on Mentimeter. Make sure you're on Menti. Um, um, please be on Menti uh, so that you are, um, you are answering questions on Mentimeter. Click on the link in the chat um, or in the description that will give you uh, access to Mentimeter. Uh, please read the des uh, description. Uh, so the quiz is already on, first round is already on. It's happening on Menti and, um, and, and make sure that you answer on time. 15 seconds for each question, four questions in the first round. Questions are moving up uh, um, and it's a very tight race, a tight quiz happening on Menti. Uh, the first round is underway. All right, so uh, please make sure you have logged in onto Menti and you're following along. Questions for the parents' generation, questions for the kids' generation as well. So both generations need to be there answering it uh, working together as a team. This is a family quiz, and I hope that you are having fun as you are playing along, right? So questions um, coming up. Um, the first round is almost done. We've got the uh, the fourth question coming up on uh, of the first round coming up on Menti. All right. So uh, please make sure you're on Menti. The quiz is a 20 second delayed if you're following YouTube. So make sure you're on Menti while the quiz is on. Fourth question, first round. This is for the the Gen Z in COD, the game COD, D stands for what? Delivery, destiny, duty, desire. What does D stand for in COD? This is a Gen Z question. The parents would need help of their kids. They might not know this. You might know it if you're a really cool dad <laughs> or a cool mom for that matter. All right, so COD is actually Call of Duty. So that's the game. A lot of, lot of, lot of kids are, I'm sure all the 29 are youngsters who know what Call of Duty is. Okay, let's let's quickly review the first round answers. Um, floppy disk, I'm not sure if if the younger generation has ever seen a floppy disk. It, it used to hold 1.44 MB. That's half, maybe one fourth of a song. <laughs> that was that was how big it was and how small on data it was, and that was my childhood, right? Um, second, Mukesh Khanna. I mean, who can forget his role as Shakti Man? Is what most of your parents, uh, at least in their teens, they grew up with. Uh, BTS is uh, is a South Korean band. A lot of your teens knew that. Uh, and COD is not uh, cash on delivery. It is call of duty. Okay, let's look at the scoreboard after the first round is over. Let's have a look at this. Um, okay, so some of you have not renamed yourself, uh, but it's Aditi Roy who is leading with Clive and Shub in, uh, in number two and three. We've got Nan uh, 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 Rona, we've got uh, Vinu, we've got Akshay, Pratibha, and Sheena in the top uh, on the top ten. Right. So thank you for joining. I mean, uh, this is. I hope that you are um, you are um, uh, you're following along and um, you are um, uh, you're enjoying the quiz. Right. So we'll go to the second segment. Um, we'll go to the second segment, and uh, this is uh, talking about giving the gift of time. Uh, to teens. And we've got uh, Mr. Rob Smythe. He is the director of Wigio. Um, he started Wigio two years back and, and uh, we are all part of Wigio. Me, Rob and Emmanuel. It's a small little company here in Lucknow, but we enjoy doing our work, um, being of service to uh, the people we serve. So over to Rob to talk about giving teens the gift of time. 
Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I really enjoyed Janet's talk. Uh, even though it was 15 minutes, it was full of wonderful information. And uh, I hope the rest of this time will be helpful to all of you as you continue to think about parenting teens. Um, I, uh, one of the things that I want to come back to over and over again is, is trying to get in the minds of teens and then thinking about how we can use our time with teens. And so during this time, we're going to be just thinking about, okay, how can we go from Yes, this, this is what we need to do, but put it into our schedule. And before we do that, I just want to raise a question to you all. It should be on Menti. You'll see it on Menti. Uh, there's a question on Menti, and, and uh, it'll come up on the screen for you all to see. Um, it's, it's basically based off a of scenario. You've got this scenario. Uh, you'll see it on Menti coming up, uh, where there's a, a teen and a, a, a parent talking to one another. And so it begins... And you've got, um, they sit, you're sitting down for dinner. Uh, you sit together as a family, which is a great thing. Uh, your teenage son or daughter sits down grumpy, which is a very common thing. Uh, and you ask, how was your day? And they say, fine. You ask, what did you do today? They respond, nothing. Again, you ask, you didn't do anything today? They say, yep. <laughs> so, so what do you do? In a, in a time like that, what do you do next? And I've, I've given you four options. A, finish dinner and move on with the evening. B, say with frustration, why can't you talk more? Uh, C, change the topic of conversation and ask more questions later. Or D, say you look a bit upset, what's wrong? What's wrong? So let's see what the, the responses are. Uh, we have uh, several people responding right now. Um, so. Uh, 33% say change the topic of conversation, ask more questions later, great. 50% uh, say you look a bit upset, what's wrong? 5% uh, say finish dinner and move on with the evening, okay? Uh, and then 13% say with frustration, why can't you talk more? Um, well, every situation is gonna be different. And I specifically put these, this question in here because there is no clear answer for every particular situation. Now, the first two are, aren't, aren't the best uh, things to do. Just ignore it and move on. Now, yes, you could ignore it for a time, a, a, a short product, a period of time, but then you have to address it. You have to go into your, your, your child's life and learn to relate to them. Or you could get really frustrated, but in the end, how does that help? Uh, but there are options where you do, you just move on with the conversation and may address it later, or you can, you can um, uh, ask them what's wrong. Uh, there are many things. And, and the first thing, I, as I think about teens, is they're not an equation. They're not a mathematical equation where you know exactly what to do in every situation. And the key is to know your teen well so you know what to do. And so as we think about time, I want to think about three things that will help you in situations like that, not just to see it as one situation that you respond to, but a lifestyle. How do you, in your lifestyle with your family, uh, take priority in, in, in putting priority in your children's lives? So number one, a transforming mindset, a transforming mindset. Uh, this is one thing I want you to get from, from my time with you. Your teenager is a gift. Now, this is a transforming mindset. Your teenager is a gift. Now, gifts have value. And for some people, if you get a gift, like a friend of mine who, who uh, got a gift from um, their spouse and the, immediately they were trying to sell it on the internet. Now, they didn't really value that gift. We all receive gifts all the time. Now, one thing I want to say about teenagers is they are an immeasur immeasurably valuable gift. They, their, their, their value is immeasurable. And one of the things about them being a gift is not so much the, the value of what they do, but who they are. It's an intrinsic value that each teenager has. And if you take one thing from my time with you, it's this, remember that your teen is a gift. It'll change the way you see every scenario. So when they're frustrating, you still respond, they're a gift. Because why? The, the, the fact that they are a gift does not 
uh, depend on how they act and what they do or the circumstances you're in. It's who they are. They are a gift no matter what they say, no matter what they do, no matter how well they, they score on their exams, no matter who their friends are, no matter what they want to do in the future, they are always and forever will be a gift. And that changes everything in the way we relate to our children. Now, as I've talked about thinking about time, I want to do two more things. I want to uh, quickly give you an assessment uh, way of, of looking at your life as you think about the time that you use. And so we're going to do these three things. Assess your time, reflect on where you want to grow, and act on what you will start and stop. At Video, we, we use this assessment test called uh, the Wheel of Time, or on the internet, you can also see the Wheel of Life. And you'll see on our blog, we have a blog that covers the same material that I'm going to be covering right now. So if you, you miss some of the things, then please feel free, go to the, our blog, uh, and you can use it as a way to assess your life, assess your time and the priorities that you have. So this is the way how, this is how it works. Basically, you've got these circles, and this is what the, an empty wheel of time looks like. So you've got these circles, and there's five concentric circles, each within each other. And then there's lines that cut it like a pizza. And at the end of each of those lines are lines that you will write something down. So if you have a pen and paper right now, you can try and do it. Or later, um, when you look at our blog, you can do this. Take 15 to 30 minutes and just do this yourself. It's a wonderful activity. I plan on doing it again uh, after this weekend. And um, it'll help me as I think about my priorities. So first, you've got these five concentric circles. And you draw those, and then you draw four lines. Now, you could do five lines, in which case there would be uh, 10 slices, or you can do six lines, in which there are 12 slices. But basically, each slice is going to be a role or a routine in your life. And notice how there are percentages. You've got 100% is on the outside, 80%, then 60%, 40%, 20%. Now, how does this actually relate to your time? The next step you need to take is you need to, to look at these all of these lines that you have and put a category or a role or a routine in your life at the end of those lines. So you see at all of these, you've got career, you have father, husband, whatever your role might be. It could be uh, a routine in your life, exercise. It could, it could be a value you have, like your spiritual life. It could be reading, a hobby. Uh, it could be entertainment. These are the things that are important to you or just things that you do every week. So you write those eight things, or if you, you have 10, you do 10 things, and you write those at the end of each of the lines. And then the next step is that you want to think about what is the ideal amount of time you want to spend in each of these areas. So look at the top, spiritual life. So say you want to spend an hour a day uh, in your spiritual life. And so that's seven hours in the week, okay? So this is, this is thinking about your weekly schedule. What do you devote your time to and what do you want to devote your time to? So first, in parentheses, next to each of those different roles or routines, you, you will, you'll write a number. That's the number of hours that you want to spend in the week. So next, you've got exercise. That's three hours. So, so say you want to do uh, 30 minutes, six days a week. That's three hours, right? Uh, father, say you want to spend two hours a day with your children. That'd be 14. Husband, 14. Uh, entertainment, seven. And then you see career, 40 hours. So these are the hours that you ideally want to spend in each role or routine. And then after that, you'll notice there's X's on each of these lines that are connected to each role or routine. And on that X is, is what you not ideally want to see happen. It's what you actually see happen. And so if you were, say, again, spiritual life, seven hours. Um, so if you go down to uh, the amount that you actually spend, maybe you spend about five, five and a half hours. And so you do about 80% of what you ideally would want to do. Then you see exercise. And exercise, this is the, this is the area that we all, all neglect, isn't it? And uh, instead of the 100% being on the, the, the out, outside, uh, you probably do about 20%, which is maybe, um, maybe 30 minutes in the week, right? And then you have the father. 
and this is where you want to do 14 hours and instead you do 40 percent of that time uh, which is somewhere about five hours in the week and then you've got the husband and again you do only five hours entertainment and that's where you see whoa i am doing a hundred percent of my entertainment right and then you've got career you're doing a hundred percent of that and and so what you see is there's there's this kind of imbalance in in our lives where uh we devote the time that we ideally should devote in certain areas and we don't devote the time we ideally should in other areas and so then this is an example of somebody who has done uh 10 different areas and this is uh the, what it kind of looks like is you 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 connect all of those x's and you see where your balance and your 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 strengths and weaknesses are and so as you do that, you see, okay, where am I prioritizing my time? Not just where I want to prioritize my time, but where do I actually prioritize my time? And so this will help you to see where you're balanced, where you're misbalanced, the things that you're neglecting and the things that you want to invest more time in. And so the first thing you do with that tool is you're assessing your time. The second thing you want to do after you've, you've seen the, the kind of areas where you, you feel like you're neglecting, you want to reflect on where you want to grow. So uh, you can ask reflection questions like, uh, where are the places where I, uh, I need to spend more time in this particular wheel of time? Where are the places I need to spend less time in this particular wheel of time? Uh, why do I spend more time in one area and less time in another? Or should I adjust my expectations in the way I view how much time I ideally would spend in each particular area? Now, this is really helpful. I plan on doing it again after this weekend because I have a lot of things coming up and I need to, to really reflect again on, on how I uh, use my time. But it's, it's not helpful unless you actually act on it, right? Some of us love to reflect, but, but don't act as much. We need to do both. And so what you want to do after you've, you've reflected on it is you want to act on what you will start and what you will stop. So things that you're going to start are the areas where you feel like you've neglected. Uh, so in this picture, you could see uh, that this particular person is, is neglecting being a team member on his particular uh, uh, field of work, right? So he, he needs to, what he needs to do is he needs to kind of expand that and, and give more time to building relationships on the team. Or say he spends a lot of time in, in being a, a sports player and that's where you need to stop. You need to kind of come back and think, how can I spend less time in this area so that I can give more time in others? In other words, this is just a really helpful tool for you to assess where you are and where you wanna go. And I, my guess for all of us is, is one of the areas that we all feel weak is we wanna give more time to our children. If they are a gift, if they are of such value that they, they can never, they're priceless gifts, we wanna give more time to them. So this is a way to assess. But finally, what can we do with our children? What are the things that we can do? What are some steps uh, that we can take in, in uh, our lives and in the way we spend our time with our children. Here are four tips for life. Number one, uh, prioritize family times, right? So this is, again, we're thinking about time. Think about the times where you can be together as a family, if it's dinner uh, or breakfast, or if it's um, going for walks, or if it's finding uh, enjoyable things that you like to do together. Uh, it could be uh, related to the sports that one of your children plays. It's, it's family times, which doesn't necessarily mean having deep, intense talks, but just having time together, prioritizing that time and seeing it as valuable. If you see your child as a gift, this is, this is something that you will want to value. The second thing, um, observe times when your team talks. Observe times when they talk. So this is, this is where you, you see in their life, um, there are certain times where they're going to just say, yep, nope, I'm fine. And often those are times where maybe they just don't like to talk. Maybe they, they prefer to talk in the evenings rather than the mornings, or maybe they prefer to talk in the mornings rather than the evenings, or maybe they're, for some kids, it's just you, you catch them at, at a, a time where you're driving in the car or uh, you're, it's, it's the middle of the night and you're about to go to sleep and they want to talk. Observe those times and make it a priority. 
Think about their time. So don't just try to fit them into your schedule, though you need to think about your schedule and you have to. And the next um, item, I'm going to be talking about that. But, but you also want to think, what are those times where, where they're more talkative, where they're willing to talk to you? And that's when you really need to maximize that time. Third, uh, create boundaries for technology time. So uh, on the one hand, we want to get into our children's schedules. But at the other, on the other hand, we want to think about our teens as, as people who um, need help in, in creating boundaries. Uh, even though they are growing and they're trying to push boundaries, they're trying to think about what they can do as, as, as an, almost an adult, they're adjusting, their life is changing before your eyes. At the same time, they still need your input. They still need boundaries. And specifically, one area where it's so easy for teens to get sucked into something that isn't valuable, that isn't helping you, their relationship with you, they're not helping their, their, them progress into the future, is technology. Now, technology is not a bad thing. We're, you're using technology right now. But there needs to be good boundaries. So think about it. Uh, probably the best thing to do is not just to go after this session and say, we're going to make you, you, you cannot use your social, your social media for the rest of the evening. Now, that is not a good idea. That's not going to help you. But think clearly and then discuss it with, with your team. Think, okay, what are some boundaries we can make to help you flourish more in, say, your studies or so that we can have time together as a family? Or uh, if there are certain hobbies that they enjoy besides just playing video games where they can actually uh, learn and grow to help them create boundaries. So in other words, don't just create the boundaries for them, but include them in a way in that decision so that they can have, they can own that, that, that decision of creating boundaries for technology in their life. Fourth thing is this, say no to some things to say yes to your team. Ultimately, uh, just like in the wheel of time, we're always saying yes to one thing and saying no to another. And uh, this is where you really just need to assess your schedule, think about your time and learn to say no to some things so you can say yes to even better things. And so again, those four tips, uh, the, the first thing that we, we see is that we need to prioritize family times. Uh, the second thing is that we need to observe times when they talk. Uh, third, create boundaries for technology time. And fourth, say no to some things to say yes to your team. I just wanna end again on the, the note that our, our teens are a gift. Our teens are a gift. And I wanna encourage you, um, even tonight, just to say, it might feel awkward, but just to say you're a gift. You can say it to your, your child. Um, I, that's something that I've, I've learned um, early on uh, from a friend of mine who often would, would say to his wife, you're a gift. And he would often say to his children, you're a gift. And it's something that I've taken on and even in the days when I see rebellion in my children, I can say, you're a gift. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rob. That was a gift <laughs> to all of us. Uh, if you felt the same, if you, if you, if you uh, got something really valuable from this second segment, can you put that in the chat, uh, in the YouTube uh, chat? What is one takeaway, one big takeaway? from a uh, topic number two, giving teens the gift of time. It's not uh, the new iPhone or the latest softwares or uh, new clothes. I and mean, of course, you, if you can afford that, you should buy them, but but more importantly, it's the gift of time. So uh, what, what is your big takeaway as a parent? Can you put that in the, uh, in the YouTube chat? And we are getting it ready for our second round of the family quiz, remember? Uh, there are two levels of questions. One is uh, so that uh, the, the parents can do. It's all um, uh, about the 90s and the 80s, late 80s and 90s. So questions that teens may not have answers to and some questions that only teens can answer. So we have uh, made it in such a way that you have to work as a team. So please go over to Menti. We have round number two waiting for you there. And, um, and and we have uh, uh, we have the second round uh, starting in a moment. So make sure that you are on Menti uh, for the family quiz round number two. Uh, it will start any moment. Um, so yes, I'm seeing some answers coming in. Uh, knowing the talking time, very good uh, uh, takeaway. Children are a gift from God. So we need to handle it away and give them time and care. Teens are a gift. Uh, yes, I will tell my girl that she is a gift, definitely. I think that's something that we can start a good starting point uh, 
uh, is to look at children as gifts. Even when uh, uh, they they give you a lot of headaches <laughs> and a lot of trouble, in the midst of that, also they are gifts. Acknowledging them as a gift, right? Uh, so we have our second round of, uh, and a lot of participants waiting to go. Let's see how this shapes up. Second round, four questions, two for the parents, two for the kids, uh, so that you work as a team. Question number five. Uh, is going to start on uh, on Menti at any moment. Make sure that you are there um, and uh, you answer it on Menti. Four questions back to back so that you don't miss any of those questions. Uh, let's um, let's uh, start from um, uh, round number question number five, round number two. So make sure you're on Menti. This uh, the screen on Zoom will be frozen till the fourth question in the round so that there is no confusion. Make sure that you are on Menti, right? So we're gonna start, the, the quiz has already started on Menti. Round number two has started. Make sure that you are on Menti, right? So questions will keep coming and uh, answer it as fast as possible. And uh, make sure that you're working as a family. Some questions the kids will know, some questions the parents will know. Uh, it's designed that way. Make sure that you answer as a team, all right? So questions are all running on, um, on, um, on, on Mentimeter. Make sure that you are all there on Menti. Okay, question number five, six, seven, eight, round number two, right now in progress on Mentimeter. Make sure that you're there. All right. So uh, some questions will be beyond teenage capacity because it's uh, it could be before they were born. And some questions would be maybe beyond the reach of parents because they may not be aware of it. So that's where uh, it's a wonderful teamwork, wonderful teamwork. OK, the round two is underway. Question number uh, uh, question number five, six, seven, eight is uh, happening on uh, on the Menti quiz. OK, so make sure you're there uh, and uh, answer all the four questions questions up to eight before you come back to YouTube. All right, so I've frozen the screen. Don't be there on YouTube. I'm saying it again and again so that uh, nobody makes a mistake. All right, uh, questions uh, five, six, seven, eight happening on um, uh, on Menti. And we've got some good participation, good quizzing happening. Um, I will be putting it live after the, uh, the eighth question uh, goes on uh, so that um, we can be in sync. We've got some good answers coming in, and um, let's see how this uh, how this shapes up as we go to the last question of um, of round number two. Okay, round number two, question number eight um, of round number two. Right, so let's uh, let's have a look at question number eight. This is also happening. Carrie Minati is a. Uh, um, I'm sure the teens would know. This is for the teens, um, and I hope that you will answer that. All right, so let's uh, let's see how this goes. And uh, we've got around seven more seconds. Um, the answers will be displayed uh, very soon. Um, and uh, that's it, time up. Kari Minati is a YouTuber. I think all the, all, the, all the teens are underway there. This is great. All right, so let's look at the answers. Uh, we have uh, the answers coming up here. Chell Park. <laughs> Chell Park is an ink brand. Some of you got it wrong, but I think all the, all the parents know that. Uh, Chell Park and Hero Pens uh, was ruling the time, you know, ruling the writing space at once upon a time. Um, Sachin blasted the Aussies, uh, especially Shane Warren. I still remember that match, 99, Sharjah, Desert Storm. Uh, they lost in the semifinal, but they, I mean, they lost in the second last match and came back in the finals and defeated the Aussies. It was an amazing match, back-to-back -back centuries, one in the losing cause, one in the winning cause, uh, still fond memories of that match. Um, yes, uh, Kahoot is not a messaging app. Everything else is a social media messaging app, uh, but Kahoot is, of course, is a quizzing app like this. And um, Kenny Minati is a YouTuber, and that is the right answer. Okay, let's look at uh, who uh, or which families are on top. Um, uh, remember, this has to be uh, as a family. This is how it uh, uh, it uh, uh, works. Okay, so we've got um, uh, uh, we've got uh, Rona on top, Akshay, Jacob, Aditi. Somebody's not changed their name. Clive, Pratibha, Alex, Bamlesh, and Babita. All right, so this is uh, this is going to be a very heated uh, last round. Okay, this is for the parents, and uh, this will be the answers will be uh, discussed uh, in the in the next segment. Uh, we have the third segment coming up, topic number three. And we've got uh, Mr. Alan Victor joining us uh, from all the way from Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. Um, he is uh, basically from Chennai, but uh, for the last uh, couple of years, I think around four years plus five years, he's been in Palampur, Himachal Pradesh. He works with teenagers. Um, he he run, runs a center there for youngsters, uh, giving them direction and counsel. And he's also training in counseling. Welcome, Alan. Um, over to you as we talk about communicating better with teenagers. 
Uh, thank you so much, Davis, and a uh, special thanks to, to uh, Janet and Rob as well, who went before me. And I'm actually going to be building up on what they said, and I'm really glad that all of you signed in for this, uh, for this, for this webinar. It shows that you're really interested about families and your team, and, and I'm, I'm extremely happy that you're here. So like David said, the first thing that we're going to look at is, is that uh, quiz on Menti. So if you can go back to that. Uh, okay, so which of the following words are familiar to you, parents? Um, we'll, uh, okay, so uh, ROFL is probably a little older. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, FOMO is probably the latest one. And Boomerang, uh, when we were small, Boomerang was something that was used in Australia to fund kangaroos. But today in the world of Instagram, which is IG, by the way, Boomerang is something very, very different. Like, you know, there's this video that play on loop. Anyway, uh, so yes, thank you so much uh, for that, David. Uh, just a note to all, all of you who are listening, for parents and for children, there's one more question that's going to come up on Mentimeter after this. Uh, so please go ahead and start answering that question. Just one question for the, for the parents and one question for the team. Please answer that question, and we'll come back to those results later. Uh, so uh, stay on Mentimeter, just finish that, and then you can come back. So. Um, I, I just want to tell you that um, you know, as you do this communicating better with your team, um, it, it's quite a big topic. Just this, this parenting itself is such a big topic. And uh, I must say that like uh, the last uh, last few days, my wife and I have been like you know building this current uh, materials for this program, and uh, we've been reading some books, and also we've been involved in uh, in talking to parents and the teenagers together, and trying to kind of uh, uh, bridge the gap between communication, trying to find out what the challenges are. So. It comes from our experience as well. It comes from um, uh, also like you know, from the books that we've been reading, and I hope that you're able to take something from this uh, even this evening. So we're going to talk about the need. So why are we doing this? We're going to look at some of the methods and, uh, and how do we do this, and some practical tips, and we'll finish it off over there. So if you see the next slide, uh, you would see that uh, a survey was done for about 5,000 others about their relationship with their parents during their teenage years. And this is for the three top findings from that survey. The first thing is, uh, the, those adults had said, I wish my parents had listened to me more. The second thing that they said is, I wish the parents talked about their feelings more. And the teenager, they, they also said, I wish sometimes I could, I could have spoken more to my parents. So you can see that like, you know, from this survey, that a gap actually exists in communication. And this is what we want to address today. And uh, communication is a, is, a, is a basic element in human relationship. It's, uh, it's achieved by actions, gestures, as well as by words. So it's not always just words, but just our actions and gestures as well. The quality of the relationship can be measured by the quality of the communication. The quality of the relationship can be measured by the quality of um, uh, communication. Uh, I want to uh, like, you know, just focus a little bit on this slide over here, uh, especially like, you know, to understand place where the teenager is. So a teenager is not a child anymore. They're not an overgrown child. And they are on the way, like they're moving right on the screen. They're moving towards adulthood. And this is a time of crucial life decisions. Now, um, if your child is 14, 15 years old, you realize that very soon they're going to need to choose a stream for them, like you know, in plus one and plus two. What are they going to choose? After that, they're going to select which college, basically deciding zero wing on your career. What are you, which, which line are you going to go? Science, arts, commerce, and so on. And it's also the time, the next 10 to 15 years is the time in which your child is going to most probably choose a life partner. Very, very important decision. And, and I want to tell you the parents, parents, you don't have much time left. Times are going to go fast. And that's why it's important to start and keep the communication channel open today so that during these critical moments, you are able to take good decisions together. And, and, uh, and that's the importance of this. You can see the next slide. Uh, when a child is like, you know, zero to six years old, like the parenting style is mostly instructions. The parents just tell them, hey, wear this dress, eat your food, eat your vegetables, go to bed. Okay, the parenting role is instructor. And, and at this time, it's, um, the dominant person should be the parent of the opposite gender. So if, if I have a son, my mother should be kind of, uh, sorry, my wife should be doing this more. And like, you know, if I have a daughter, then I should be the one who should, should be enforcing this a little bit more. From the ages of six to 12, Okay, so it's, you give instructions. Instructions are basically non-negotiables. The kids don't have, uh, 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 they, don't, they don't give a feedback on that, but you tell them with explanation. So you tell them, hey, you have to eat your vegetables because it's good for your health and so on. 
So the role here is more of a guide. You're guiding them. And at this time, it's very critical that the, this more time spent by the parent of the same gender. I spend more time with my son. And when we have a daughter, my wife spends more time with her and so on. That's how it works for you also. Because this is when their body also slowly starts to change in terms of uh, maturity and so on. And then we come to this next uh, six years, which is the 12 to 18. This is the time in which there's more handholding required, where there's more freedom in decision making for the child. And this time, the parent's role is the role of a coach. Okay. Uh, now, many people would probably want to say, like, you know, I want to be a best friend to my to my son or a daughter. That's a great idea. But here's the thing: there's a clear difference between being a best friend and being a parent. We are parents 24/7. There are moments when you can be very friendly, but the thing is, we can never be like you know, like you know, friendly, friendly kind of thing where they start dictating things back to us. So this is the role of a coach, and this is critical where both parents are involved. Both the genders need to be involved to help the child see the world, to process the world, and so on. And, and, uh, and that's why I want to say parenting is a two-person job. Uh, so in case you're wondering, like, you know, hey, I haven't followed the 0 to 6, 6 to 12, 12 to 18, or like, you know, both of us have not been involved in this. Uh, let me tell you, it's not too late. It's not too late. You can start today. Uh, moving on. Uh, why is this important? Listen, if the parents are not communicating to the child, okay, the child is being communicated by the world. And by the world, what do I mean by that? So today, like children's, uh, teenagers spend a lot of time on Instagram. And thanks to especially this last one and a half years of lockdown, most of them probably have a device for themselves. And you know, when you have a personalized device, you can have your own Netflix account, your Hotstar account, and your like, you know, Amazon Prime, and, and all the other things. I, I don't even know what are the other things that are over there. And here is what happens. Uh, they start influencing our children. They start putting thoughts into their head. And uh, what kind of values and what kind of virtues do you think will be co being communicated to them? If, as a parent, this is important to you, that's why you need to, to spend a lot of time talking to your children about some of the critical things that are important for you. All right? Saying this, now, uh, uh, we're going to talk about the how on how do we do this so before that, let's let's just probably go back to uh, the mentee slide and let, look at what are the results that uh, that has come up. The two questions that were asked is like the questions for the parents was, uh, what is one thing that you wish your parents had told you when you were a teenager? Okay, so uh, as the results come up, that was the first question. The second question for the teenagers was like you know if you had to describe your parent, saying that they are not uh, like you don't want to call them parent, you want to call them with some other uh, name. What would that be? Okay, so I can see uh, um, parents are probably saying that like, you know, life is hard, be prepared for challenges. Uh, your parents are saying that I wish my parents had told that. Uh, I wish my parents had told me to be more ambitious. Uh, a parent said like, you know, to, to share the teenage, uh, to, your parents wish that your parents, that your parents spent like, you know, more time with you, especially during the challenges. Thank you so much. So let me look at some of the answers for which the, the teenagers are saying, like you're saying provider, comforter, Heroes, what, what an answer. I'm amazed. Heroes, that's, uh, thank you, teenager, for saying that. Um, different, and there are some words, like, you know, I can see torture, I can see angry. Some of the, that's how the teenagers have been responding uh, to this question. And I know it's not easy, uh, so, uh, like, you know, uh, for you to go through that and even to answer that, but thank you for being honest. Uh, the teenager said, like, the parents said, discipline. Um, and the parents said that prepared me for life after marriage. I think, like, you know, we, we, this, is, this is our fodder to kind of influence our children and talk to them on, uh, on what to talk to them like, during this formative years of them. Uh, thank you, Davis. We can go back to the slide. Thank you for, our, for the answers of all those of you who, who shared. Um, research has shown that teenagers love two things. Okay, they love two things. The first thing is honesty, the second thing is kindness. Now, this part, uh, it's not uh, very uh, um, free in, in, in this Indian culture and society. I don't know about you, but it's, it's parents think they need not be honest with them. And, uh, and I think a lot of ice can be broken uh, to keep the communication channels open if the parents are able to say, hey, I have failed. I, I've, been, I've gone through my uh, old share of difficulties. These are my hangups. And to be, to be open about that actually breaks a lot of ice. The second thing that teens would like is kindness. 
and and i know that like you know it's it's easier said than done uh, as parent, parents as like you know as older people there's so much of pressure on you to provide for your family to protect your family make your life decisions and so on and and we struggle with this but um, but the thing is so when in these struggles we sometimes tend to be rude we tend to tend sometimes tend to be angry with the teenagers the thing is when we do that we push them more and more away um so here's one of the critical points that i want to say uh, and i wanted to remember this the onus for communication is on the parents the initiative the first step to have a communication channel starts from the parents and it can actually start by being open and honest so i want to ask you some specific questions to especially the parents uh, have you spoken about your weaknesses to your children have you spoken about your failures have you spoken about regular life things like you know talk about the house finances talk about what's the plan for the family like you know this helps the child actually to know that okay i am becoming an adult and my parents are pulling me in that journey and, and so on and and you see it's with these uh, with this attitude is when we were able to talk about some of the difficult topics also uh, one of the areas where teenagers and parents have a difficult uh, 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 difficulty in communicating is like as on the dressing of the of the child the parents are not happy with the dressing or about the phone usage or about like you know which kind of friends you want to be you want to mingle with and, and so uh, if you're open if you're honest and if you're kind you'll be able to talk openly otherwise there is a chance that the teenagers would be able to go in a shell and live a secret life and the today's digitized world that's very very possible uh, and i want to say a special uh, a word to the teenagers as well uh, you need to understand that your parents are not perfect your parents are not gods in fact nothing prepares you to be a parent and they're learning on the job and i request you to give them some grace as well a lot of it is probably their own baggage that they're bringing into your family and and so uh, and sometimes when you see your parents down they also go through emotions they go they go through pain they go through difficulties but if you are able to take the initiative like you know to respond to them you would be doing your family an amazing service the second uh, like you know they're talking about this like you know the other thing that i want to say is like let me just ask this question to parents if your child comes and tells you uh, i don't want to go to school this week and he or she says this twice or thrice a week uh, how do you respond now here's the thing uh, the most common answer would be like to kind of brush it away say like no nothing like that you have to go to school every child goes to school the second thing we might do is we might try to rationalize it we might try to rationalize in the sense like you know we say okay what's the problem maybe uh, your teacher is scolding you maybe you're not doing the homework okay come let's let's sort that issue out okay while you're sorting trying to sort the issue out even that is actually not helping the child here wants to know that you have understood how they have felt and i think that's what like you know taking picking up from janet's session and like also like from what rob said what's what what are they feeling because this is a time when a lot of emotions come to them which, which are very very new to them they have not experienced these emotions before it said that until the age of 21 the child uh, like you know a human's brain is growing to understand emotions fully so until the age of 21 even though they are adults according to the law of the land they're emotionally still not fully mature and so if parents you can communicate to your child i have understood what feeling you're going through right now the child feels extremely secure and happy uh and the next thing like, like you know some of the things that you can talk about some of the things that you can talk about to your child are here are these things uh again this is all according to research and survey uh children struggle with this whole rat race stress education uh future uh, which college should i join my friends are doing better than me and so on it's 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 a big struggle and um and if that's one of the areas you need to talk to uh i think it's on the next slide uh, david so the second thing is like you know the second thing that the children struggle with is how do i uh, behave with the opposite sex and this is something again a little challenging for for kids um, and these are very active active um, questions that they have and the next thing is like you know the other stressor that they can have is relationship at home relationships at home uh, these are something that happen on an everyday basis but there are some more um, uh, passive stresses that they face that is their identity especially in the context of social media their identity in the context of social media um, uh, so we i showed a clip uh, just this some sometime before when you see instagram and all these things are trying to say this is how you need to look this is what you need to do to be accepted and and so on as you communicate to your to your children 
to your teenagers that like you know that's that's not true okay and it helps them unload some of the stress uh, and and so on so saying that like the last part that i want to cover is okay so what are some tips how do we actually uh, um, make communication channels open and and here are some everyday tips that you can use okay um, the first thing is set apart three uh, watch out for three kinds of time and i think they uh, rob spoke about this one is the everyday family time if you see if you can see this clip it's like you know it's from uh, the family man which is currently going on amazon prime and like you know the main character that he says the family that um, eats together stays together like you know he's trying to kind of build a family because his family life was was in shambles but if you can set up some kind of everyday time where you just sit and talk about mundane regular things just keep the communication channel open uh, rob again mentioned that how was your day even this very minimal answers just keep it going on talk about things like how is your homework going on do i do you need some help for that and like you know the idea here is not to control the child but like you know for the child to allow to, for them to be free to also talk and communicate so that's the first part uh, of this and again like you know the parents lead the initiative the second uh, sign that you can look for is basically the fun and 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 the entertainment time that you have as a family this could be board games this could be like you know going on family picnics this could be um, doing a hobby together with both the parents and child doing together uh, this is you know, maybe having a movie night and then talking about the movie uh, and like you know maybe watching sports together i still remember like you know um, when i was a teenager this is something that my dad would, did with me intentionally that every weekend we would sit and watch english football uh and i didn't realize that he was doing this intentionally but what actually happened was actually sitting and talking about like you know oh did you see that pass did you see that goal but it actually opens up uh, a time for us to talk about some more serious things and it built my relationship with my dad during that time and and i'm very thankful for that and and you see like it's during these fun times in which this channel kind of widens for you to openly communicate uh, with your teenager the final time that you can look look for especially this again on the parents um is the life building moments time now these are the times when like again like you know rob mentioned this like, you know watch for those times and like you know understand what are they going through emotionally and if you think you can pass on some valuable life lesson to them this is the time to communicate that and i pray that you have wisdom to do this because it's not easy but what you teach now would stay with them for the rest of their life it can come once a week it can come once a month once in six months but these are the critical times i just before i finish i just want to mention one of this again with uh, this uh, what i had with my father and how that has helped me uh, i was joining college in the city of farmato and my family had come my parents had come to drop me in uh, in the hostel and they had to rush back to the city to catch the train back to chennai uh, just before that my dad took me to the side and he said i told this to your brother i told this to your sister when they left home and i am telling this to you again at any moment in time if you think you're not able to handle this if you think the whole thing is crashing down and you're losing yourself and you're losing your soul i want you to catch the next train or bus or whatever it is and come back home your soul and your life is more important to me than your education and that communicated to me how much my father uh, cares and con- his concern about me it was not his money that he was spending to like you know help me study engineering it was not anything of that it was more car- concern for me as a person and i remember this to this day so dear parents watch out for this moment what are for this moment in which you can communicate to your child and build a legacy for the next generation thank you thank you so much uh, alan that was so so beautifully said and uh, and especially to add your own experience of how your parents helped you through your turbulent uh, teenage times and um, and and all the three speakers i mean if you could just uh, put your uh, uh, best uh, takeaways from today from what uh, janet started off with understanding emotions uh, to to preserve the identity not to destroy the identity the uniqueness of your team by calling them names or generalizing things and what rob talked about giving them the gift of time by knowing that they are the biggest gift that you have uh, for yourself and and planning your times accordingly and, and how alan ended it the need for communicating because un- if you don't communicate they are already being communicated to and uh, there needs to be channels of understanding and uh, of course it's a long 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 journey no parent is perfect we don't have perfect families we're all imperfect human beings but in the process of helping each other that's why we did this webinar and that's why we do 
our work with teenagers to help them uh, uh, to move towards um, uh, uh, towards having a much more healthier and happier life. So let me end with a story, and we have the last round uh, coming after that. This is um, uh, this is a true story of of a flight that took off from Anchorage in Alaska. This is 1983, and uh, this flight was uh, moving from uh, going from uh, Anchorage, Alaska, in the U.S. Uh, to Seoul in um, South Korea. And uh, this was supposed to be a direct flight. It was flight KL 007 1983. It had a US senator and a lot of dignitaries and a lot of passengers um, uh, in that flight, a normal commercial flight. But this was a time when the US was in a Cold War with the USSR. Russia wasn't there. It was the Soviet Union. And uh, it was a Cold War going on. And uh, so uh, there was a slight technical error when the flight took off from Anchorage. So instead of going on this dotted intended path, it took a slight deviation, a very tiny uh, deviation and uh, from the start and the pilots were not aware of it. We kind of saw that. And instead of going on uh, on the intended path and reaching um, uh, the, uh, the destination, the flight took that slight deviation and um, went on into deeper into Soviet Union territory, USSR territory. And the USSR radars picked that up. And uh, they, since it was a Cold War time, they thought that this is a spy aircraft uh, by, uh, by sent by the US. And uh, the, the pilot of the plane was unaware of, of what was happening. And he kept going and kept going without realizing that the error was happening. And, uh, and, the, and the distance from the intended path and the final path was so big that finally when uh, when the USSR, uh, uh, the, the radars picked it up and they gave warnings, it was not heated, it kept going into USSR territory. They sent two fighter jets and bombed down that passenger flight. It was one of the very drastic um, stories uh, in aviation history where a passenger flight was bombed by fighter jets, uh, never happened before. And, and that was a tragic, tragic loss uh, of lives. Um, an unintended slight error by the pilot or, or the technical crew that ended in a big disaster far away from where it was intended. I want to use this analogy of, of uh, looking at and trying to tie up what all the three speakers were saying. Teenage is such a transition time from childhood to adulthood. And this is a time where some of these course corrections need to be, uh, need to be done. Slight course corrections, uh, be it in the way they study, the way they relate with, with their friends, the way they process their emotions, the way they speak, they're confident. Uh, all those course corrections in this time really helps because if this uh, an unaltered course keeps on going, it might end up in a, in a future, in a destination where it will be so difficult to change and come back to the right path. So teenagers are a gift and as parents, they are in your hands, maybe for a few more years before they leave the house into chasing their own dreams. But these are times where you can bring those slight course corrections, bring them back on track, bring them on the track to progress and prosperity and happiness and wellness because they are a gift from God given in your hands. So uh, may these times, uh, may these workshops, may these webinars, may any of these um, uh, tips that you found useful, may them be uh, put into practice so that you can give them that your time, understand their emotions and communicate well with them. And so we at Wigio, we, we, we believe in what we do. We believe in uh, investing in teenagers. And, um, and so we have designed this, this, uh, uh, this program uh, around uh, the essentials that teenagers need to pick up. And, um, and so all the three speakers, and, and including me, the four of us, we have spent time in designing these essentials um, uh, that is in a language that the teenagers can understand. So they are soft skills um, of understanding themselves, creativity, communication, life skills about emotions, processing emotions, uh, uh, handling discouragements and disappointments, study skills, how to start enjoying your studies, and also digital skills, which are essential digital school uh, uh, tools that students can use to make their learning and life much, much better. So we have put this together in something called the Teens Summer Camp. So that's something that me, Rob and Alan, uh, we teach in that summer camp and, and um, um, Janet helps us in the mentorship program. And so here's something um, that I just wanted to just show, the, show it to you so that uh, we can know what some teenagers have said. We have done two batches and some of you have attended it who are in this webinar right now. This is what 
teens have said uh, about uh, our summer camp. This is directly from the WhatsApp um, screenshot. So uh, nothing has been edited. So one of them, others said that um, uh, for me, it was difficult to concentrate, hard to you know concentrate, but with all the tools and techniques I've learned, it's become interesting to study. The games and activity homeworks were nice. And uh, and thank you for having this summer camp. So that's, that's a feedback that we look for. When a student says, I'm looking forward for my school, I'm looking forward to study, that makes our day. Now the teens say uh, that um, uh, all the all the sessions were different, but I I learned so many things, and especially the SWOT analysis, something we do to help them realize their true potential and understand who they are. We did that, and uh, one of the students found it useful. Another one uh, that said that helped me overcome one of my weakness in life, which is working together, and uh, helped me make studying more interesting. And that's something that, uh, let me just go for one last feedback. Uh, this is uh, what some students sent us on uh, WhatsApp. Um, I hope to implement what I learned in three days because so many things uh, that were picked up in three days and uh, uh, for encouraging me uh, to thrive as a teenager. That's been our theme for the summer camp uh, to help teenagers thrive not just in one aspect of, let's say, academics, but also in life skills, in soft skills, in, in, in study skills and digital skills. So we have one new batch coming up uh, next uh, this, uh, uh, this Friday, I mean, next Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's a weekend batch. Um, it's in the evening. So even if you have classes, it's a good time to join. So you can uh, check out the link, um, read about the description, read some students' testimonials on the website, vigio.in slash teens. You can find all the information there. But there is an exclusive discount for those who are in the webinar right now. And uh, that you can find in the description, valid only till today midnight. So that's that's something that you can use. And if you find that these, um, these principles that were shared here, um, and, and Rob and Alan and me will be uh, taking uh, the sessions. Um, it will be guaranteed uh, to be fun-filled and engaging. And if you're a parent of a teen, this is something that you can gift your uh, teens as well, right? So that being said, let's go to the final round, the very finals of, uh, of, of today's quiz, the very final round of Parenting Teens webinar. I hope you enjoyed uh, being here. I hope that um, um, uh, that you've been following um, and, and, and finding it uh, an interesting time, right? So let's go to the final round. Uh, if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please click that subscribe button. Uh, it, will, it will just help us uh, create more content like this. And, uh, and this is the final round. Please be there on Menti. And uh, please make sure that you are on Menti for the entire duration of this round. Four questions. Round three uh, is going to be uh, on uh, on Menti. So make sure that you are there uh, and you answer all the questions. I'm just going to wait for everyone to join. And uh, if you are there, don't go anywhere. Be on Menti and answer all the questions before you um, before you close. So four questions. Questions number nine, 10, 11, 12. 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, will be on Menti. So I'm just going to wait for a few more seconds for everyone to join. But if you're there, the questions will appear at any moment and uh, make sure that you answer the questions fast and answer the questions throughout so that all the four questions are answered, right? So round uh, three, four questions is going to start at any moment. Be on Menti and um, let's, uh, let's begin uh, the final round of the quiz okay so the quiz has begun it's on menti make sure that you are there uh four questions two from the parents generation two from the teens generation and um, let's see how uh this ends up right so questions are started uh this is happening on menti make sure that you uh you answer the questions on menti and um, answer fast for more points and um, answer together so that you can work as a team, right? So questions uh, coming up on Menti, the, the questions number 9, 10, 11, 12, all happening on Menti uh, right now as it, uh, as it comes from the 90s. I do remember them uh, as, um, as a teen. I do remember seeing some of those um, advertisements, um, TV shows um, as a teen, as a young kid. Um, so I'm sure that your parents uh, definitely uh, relate with them, right? So uh, this is happening on Menti questions, 9, 10, 11, 12, happening on Menti at the moment as we speak. I see around 50 of you are actively participating in the quiz. Um, and this is pretty exciting as we come to the very close at the very end of this quiz. And it's, it's a time to see who is going to win this quiz. 
Okay, so we've got um, uh, we've got the second last question running now on Menti. We've got a few more seconds for that to end. All right, so that's uh, it's coming to a close on Menti. Let's go to the uh, to the final question um, coming up. Let me just put back that on YouTube. All right, so I'm sure that you're on on YouTube on Menti right now as you as you're participating. Fifty one of you are participating. A final question, the final round of this. Okay, find the odd one odd one out of this. Uh, Spider Man, Black Panther, Iron Man, Batman. Who is the odd one out uh, in these four? Uh, for characters, okay. These are um, uh, these are superheroes uh, in uh, in the um, in the comic or the action world. All right. So the right answer was Batman. We could get to the reason why it is. All right. Let's get to the answers. Four questions were asked. Four questions asked. Uh, question one was about Y2K virus. That was actually a. I, I still remember. I was in class five. Um, it was a scare that when 2000, uh, the year 2000 would come, uh, the computers would read it as 1900 and everything would crash, but nothing happened. It was just a scare. It was called the Y2K scare, Y2K virus. Um, of course, your parents would know. Jasus Vijay, I still remember watching that. Uh, it was uh, a show produced by BBC uh, for AIDS awareness. It was very, very popular. It did this job of bringing awareness of about HIV and AIDS. All right, um, the next question, of course, it's winner, winner, chicken dinner. That is what made PUBG, you know, PUBG, all the PUBG fans uh, know that. Right, the last one is uh, Batman is the right answer because Batman is from uh, DC uh, and uh, everyone else from MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, so that, that's the right answer. And uh, so, as we said again, uh, the team scam starts on, uh, on Thursday evening uh, at uh, 5 p.m., uh, grab your exclusive discount from the YouTube descri uh, description that's uh, that's there and it's also will be shared in the chat uh, again. Uh, this is only available uh, from this link. Uh, that's an exclusive discount you have. So we have had an amazing two sessions, two camps, two, two groups, and, um, and we hope to have more students um, and, uh, and so that we can train them in all of these essential skills. All right, so let's get to the, uh, the final scoreboard and uh, see how this all ends. Um, let's, let's have a look, all the top 10 get a prize and I'll, I'll declare the prize uh, at the very end. Okay, so we've got, um, yeah, we've got Pratipa Sadgopin, so uh, who is winning along with Jacob Matthews. Make sure that you take a screenshot of your uh, phone or computer screen where it says that you finished first or you finished second, not the YouTube one, but on the Menti one. So that's kind of a proof that it was you. So the first two uh, families get a 500 rupee Amazon gift card from us, uh, so the first two families and the first five, uh, including the first two, so one, two, three, four, five, get um, a free um, uh, pass in the uh, boot camp, if, uh, sorry, the summer camp, if you've already done summer camp, you have an alternative for that. The, uh, the rest of the five, the position six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, get 50% off uh, into the summer camp. Again, if you've done the summer camp, we have um, uh, some alternative arrangements for you. So, so the top 10, all of you get prizes, top two get Amazon gift cards, uh, that will be mailed to you. Make sure that you contact Emmanuel at 875 um, 6 Emmanuel will be posting his number. So make sure that you set a screenshot of that as a WhatsApp to Emmanuel uh, to claim your prize. And uh, we will be sorting out and sending you as an email. So congratulations, everyone, everyone who participated. It's been, uh, it's been, it's been a wonderful joy to see you guys work as a family. Uh, Pradipa, Sadhgobin and your family, Jacob Matthew and your family. I hope that you had extreme fun um, um, working together as a family. So it was a joy to, to have you on board. So thank you so much for joining. Um, you can follow our work at Vigyo India. Vigyo India is our, um, is our Instagram handle. You can, uh, follow us there. Uh, eight, seven, five, six, triple nine, triple eight is our, um, uh, is our number. You can, uh, you can also follow our blog at vigio.in forward slash blog. And um, all of these things will be there. And I hope that you enjoy today's session. It was uh, almost um, um, 88 minutes, two more minutes to go, but uh, we, we try to wrap it on time. Uh, so I wanna thank um, um, all of you guys who joined. Thanks, uh, Janet, uh, uh, for that wonderful session. Thanks, uh, Alan and Rob. Uh, we really appreciate your presence and all of you guys who 
uh, were participants here. So just put your uh, put your um, feedback or just what was uh, what do you think about today? Can you just put that on the uh, on the on the YouTube comments? We'll read that. Whatever you thought about today's session, just put your feedback there, and uh, we would be really really uh, appreciate uh, your time as you put in there. So thank you so much for joining. Take these things, put it into practice. May your families uh, be much more fruitful. And uh, may you, um, as a parent, give more time to your gift, which is your son or your daughter. And may you, as a teenager, uh, give that space and time and grace to your parents as, as all of you uh, work together for a wonderful future. So at Vigio, it's been, a, it's been an honor to uh, do this work with you. And uh, we hope that it has been of some value to you, added some value to you as a parent, as a teen, and you enjoyed uh, your time here. So please check out the links in the description. If you're interested in summer camp, you can join right now. Uh, links valid till midnight today for the next uh, five hours. Um, but you can check out our work and, uh, and read it and uh, let us know what you thought about it. Thank you so much and uh, God bless you. Have a good evening. Uh, spend time with your family. Put your comments in the uh, YouTube link. Uh, we'll be reading that. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Manage to stay on for uh, two more minutes.